Hi friends, my name is Sarah Wilson and I am the Director of Education at the Autry Museum of the American West. The Autry Museum is located in Griffith Park, which is located in Los Angeles. The Los Angeles region is the ancestral home of the Gabrielino Tongva, whose continued presence on the land since time immemorial we honor and celebrate. This lesson will focus on animals of the American West. As we progress through the lesson, there will be questions to answer and activities to do. Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the questions and complete the activities. There is also a companion worksheet available with the questions and activities, as well as vocabulary words. Let's get started. Animals play many roles in the West. They are wonderful companions to humans. They inspire works of art. They provide resources such as meat for food, hide and fur for clothing, and power for pulling sleds and plows. Some of them can help on the farm or the range, herding livestock and hunting game. In many native communities, animals are sacred and important characters in creation stories. The West is home to an amazing variety of wildlife, from the butterfly to the jackrabbit, the bison to the rattlesnake. During this lesson, you will have a chance to learn about some of the animals that have called the West home, explore the ways in which artists have celebrated animals through art, discover how important animals are to the American West, and understand the reasons why some animals are threatened across the American West. Before we begin our lesson, here are two questions to answer. Question number one, what is your favorite animal? Question number two, why is it your favorite? Please feel free to pause this video to answer these questions. Tools for horses. Few animals have had the impact on the West like horses. Until the automobile, horses were essential in Western work, whether you were hunting, traveling, moving cattle, or carrying the mail. Even today, cowboys and other Westerners rely on horses in their daily work. Because horses have played such an important role across the American West, tools have been created to make working with horses easier. For the tribes of the Great Plains, horses have represented both wealth and freedom. Because of this, riding gear, such as this woman's saddle, is an important form of self-expression. The frame is constructed with elk horn and covered with hide. Then the hide is decorated with beautiful and colorful beadwork, particularly along the pommel and stirrups. Question number three. What patterns and shapes do you notice in the saddle's beadwork designs? Activity number one. Design your own saddle. What kinds of materials would you use to decorate your saddle? Would you use beads like the crow saddle? What sort of images would you add to decorate your saddle? Please feel free to pause this video to complete the activity and answer the question. Born in Sweden, Edward H. Boleyn left for the United States at the age of 15. His dreams of the American West led him to a job working on cattle drives in Montana. He eventually opened his own saddle shop in Cody, Wyoming. Actor Tom Mix convinced Mr. Boleyn to open a shop in Los Angeles, where he ended up creating more than 12,000 saddles, many of them for the Hollywood crowd. Mr. Boleyn was also a fine silversmith, creating exquisite belts, buckles, and spurs. The 
This is a beautiful saddle that is elaborately decorated. Included in the panels are scenes featuring many of the West's most famous animals, bears, bighorn sheep, owls, bison, lizards, beavers, eagles, mountain lions, hawks, and jaybirds. Question number four. Compare Mr. Boleyn's saddle to the Crow Woman's saddle. In what ways are they different? How are they similar? Question number five. Why do you think Mr. Boleyn chose to use animals to decorate this saddle? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the questions. This is a saddle blanket. Saddle blankets are placed underneath the saddle to protect the horse's back and cushion the saddle. By the middle of the 19th century, horses were seen as a symbol of wealth and status for members of the Navajo community. The number of horses owned by a person indicated wealth, as well as the kinds of gear used for riding and taking care of those horses. This particular blanket features a horse at the center surrounded by what is called the eye dazzler pattern, which refers to the geometric zigzag patterns and lightning bolts. Question number six, what are other items that symbolize wealth and status? Activity number two, Design your own saddle. What colors, patterns, and shapes will you feature? Please feel free to pause this video in order to complete the activity and answer the question. Spurred on. Spurs have been used by riders for thousands of years. A spur is a small piece of metal, often in the shape of a circle, attached to the heel of a boot. The rider uses the spur to guide the horse, not to force it or to hurt it. Over the centuries, riders have developed different styles of spurs. Some are very fancy, while others are simple and plain. Question number seven, pick your two favorite spur designs and compare them to each other. In what ways are they different? How are they similar? Activity number three, design your own set of spurs. If you are a horseback rider, what would your spurs look like? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the question, and complete the activity. Where the Buffalo Roam. An estimated 60 million bison lived in North America before 1800. While the bison mean different things to different communities, it is a keystone species to the American grassland. Bison urine and dung return important nutrients back to the soil. When bison roll around on the ground, it creates small dips in the ground that hold in moisture, providing a place where plant life can thrive. Bison are also sacred species to Plains communities, including the Lakota, Sioux, Kiowa, and Comanche. Bison is also an essential source of meat for food, fur and hide for clothing, and bones for tools. During the 19th century, bison were shot for sport. They were also killed so that the people of the Plains nations would go hungry. By 1900, there were only about 300 bison left alive. 
Fortunately, through the collaborative efforts of many people, there are now an estimated 53,000 bison alive today, 3,000 of which live in Yellowstone National Park. In 2016, President Barack Obama signed legislation naming the American bison as the official national mammal of the United States. After an expedition to America in 1832, Sir William Drummond Stewart was so taken by the iconic animal of the plains that he designed these remarkable chairs for his Scottish estate, Mirthly Castle. The horns on each chair are real bison horns, mementos from his Western adventures. Question number eight. Imagine you are a guest at Mirthly Castle and you get to sit down on one of these chairs. What do you think it would feel like? Is it comfortable? Question nine, why do you think the bison is such an important symbol of the American West? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer these questions. Painter Albert Bierstadt is known for his beautiful paintings of Western landscapes. In this particular painting, he has captured a peaceful moment in the grasslands. A herd of bison have stopped at a watering hole to graze and drink while the sun slowly sinks behind the horizon. Activity number four. Imagine you are standing in this landscape and close your eyes. What sounds do you hear? Can you hear the bison moving? Can you hear any birds singing? Activity number five, write a poem that tells the story of this painting. Please feel free to pause this video in order to complete these activities. Animals in art. Because animals are so important, they are a common subject in artwork. Basket weavers, sculptors, painters, glass blowers, and beadwork artists have all celebrated their respect and passion for the animals found throughout the American West. Let's explore some of those artworks. Bears and salmon are two very important animals for native communities in Northern California. For many communities, bears represent healing and medicine, while salmon is an essential source of food and serves as a sign of environmental health and well being. As a keystone species, healthy salmon populations signify healthy and clean waterways, as well as healthy plants and animals. This is Rick Bartow's sculpture. Bear and Salmon Conversation. Activity number six. This sculpture is called Bear and Salmon Conversation and captures a moment when the bear and salmon are discussing something. Imagine what they are saying. Write down this conversation. Please feel free to pause this video in order to complete the activity. Colorado artist Doug Owen creates works of art called assemblages. An assemblage is a work of art created by collecting and bringing together objects and materials that can be found all around you. The objects and materials are often part of your everyday life. Mr. Owen visits old farms and abandoned lots to collect parts from old cars and tractors. He takes those old parts and transforms them into unique sculptures that celebrate his passion for horses. Even though his sculptures are abstract, there is no mistaking the animal they represent. 
Activity number seven, make your own horse assemblage. You may not know it, but your home is full of items you can use to make a work of art. Search for items such as scraps of paper, buttons, paper clips, bobby pins, stickers, thread, and anything else interesting. Use these items to create your own Manchester. Activity number eight. Manchester is a very interesting sculpture, but can you imagine Manchester as a real horse? Write a story about him, use complete sentences, and include the following details in your story. Where does Manchester live? How old is Manchester? Who are his friends? What does Manchester do every day? Does he travel? If so, where does he go? Please feel free to pause this video in order to complete these activities. Susie Smoke, an Ogallala Sioux woman from Pine Ridge, South Dakota, created this dress out of buckskin. She decorated the yoke of the dress with riders on horseback made from brightly colored glass beads. Sioux women haven't always used glass beads. Before European traders brought glass beads to North America, members of Plains communities would decorate their clothing with materials they found in nature. Bone, dried berries, stones, shells, and animal claws. Today, Sioux community members, just like their ancestors, still decorate clothing with images and materials that tell stories about their surroundings and their beliefs. The clothing is a way to connect the wearer to their family and community. Question number 10. What materials are your clothes made out of? Do you know where those materials come from? Question number 11. Find a special piece of clothing in your closet and compare it to Miss Smoke's beaded dress. How are they different? In what ways are they similar? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer these questions. The desert landscape is a unique environment that supports thousands of plants and cultural traditions. This basket tray is an example of an artwork that represents the desert environment. The animals that call it home, such as the rattlesnake you see, and the cultural traditions practiced by its inhabitants, such as the art of basket weaving. Question number 12. This basket was made by a basket weaver to celebrate their home. If you were to create your own basket celebrating your home, what plants and animals would you include in your design? Question number 13. Why do you think the basket weaver chose to include a rattlesnake instead of another desert animal? Please feel free to pause this video in order to complete these questions. William Robertson Lee was an active painter and illustrator. As a young man, he studied in the United States and Europe, but as a professional artist, he fell in love with the American West. For him, the West was a place where my spirit will be free. Through his many travels to places like the Dakotas, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Arizona, Mr. Lee was able to create colorful paintings featuring the many landscapes of the American West. This painting, Leader of the Badlands Bunch, features a horse at the center of the painting. It is the leader of a group of wild horses roaming across the Badlands, which are located in Western North Dakota. Question number 14. How many horses can you count in the Badlands Bunch? What roles do you think each horse plays in the bunch? 
Question number 15. Look closely at the Badlands landscape in the painting. How would you describe this landscape? Is it lush and green? Is it bare? Is it hot or cold? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the questions. Preston Singletary is an incredibly talented artist from the Northwest coast of the United States. He began his studies in the art of glass blowing in the Seattle area. Soon his education took him to Sweden and Italy where he studied with Venetian glass masters. His work challenges the idea that native artists are best suited to working with so-called traditional materials, blending European glass blowing techniques with his Tlingit cultural heritage. The relationships between humans and Raven is the focus of this sculpture, Raven Transformation Mask. Raven is known throughout Northwest Coast communities as a trickster, a shapeshifter, but also the person who brought light to the communities. This sculpture celebrates the idea that humans and animals are connected to each other, as well as to the spirit world. Raven, Raven transformation mask can be displayed in two ways. Open, this image, or closed, this image. The transformation as indicated in the title is the transformation of Raven to human. Question number 16. What shapes and patterns do you notice in Mr. Singletary's sculpture? Activity number 10. Do you know a story in which an animal plays a key role? Share that story with a friend. Please feel free to pause the video in order to answer the question and complete the activity. Like Doug Owen, sculptor Deborah Butterfield explores her love of horses through her unique sculptures. Red Branch looks like it is a sculpture made out of branches from a tree, but it is actually made from the metal bronze. Ms. Butterfield begins her sculptures by choosing different sticks and branches to create the form of a horse. A mold is made of each stick and each branch, and then molten bronze is poured into the molds. After the bronze has cooled, Ms. Butterfield paints the pieces to look like wood sticks and branches. Her sculptures are ghost-like forms full of personality. Question number 16. Why do you think Ms. Butterfield uses branches from trees to sculpture her horses? Question number 17. Imagine you are going to create your own horse sculpture. What kinds of materials would you use to create your own sculpture? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer these questions. Painter, illustrator, photographer, sculptor, and war correspondent, Frederick Remington created an impressive amount of artwork in his 49 years. While based mostly in New York, he traveled throughout the American West with stops in the Montana Territory, Kansas, and the Southwest. This particular sculpture, the Bronco Buster, was Mr. Remington's first sculpture and is perhaps one of his most well-known works of art. It is based on an illustration he created for the publication Harper's Weekly and features a cowboy breaking in a wild horse. This sculpture is celebrated as an important moment for Western art because of the movement and emotion Mr. Remington captured in the horse and cowboy. 
Question number 18. What kinds of emotions do you think the cowboy in this sculpture was feeling in this moment? Was he scared or happy? Activity number 11. This sculpture was based on an earlier drawing Mr. Remington did. What do you think it looked like? Draw your version of it. Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the question and complete the activity. Western Washington State is home to the Quileute Nation, especially Washington's beautiful coast. And as such, the Quileute people have relied on the gifts of the ocean, salmon, seals, and whales. Like many other Northwest Coast nations, animals such as the raven and coyote feature prominently in Quileute stories, but the whale is also very important. Quileute whaling canoes can be up to 190 feet in length and carry up to 6,000 pounds. And before whaling was outlawed in the United States, whaling canoes reached as far north as Southeast Alaska and as far south as California. An unknown artist carved this rattle to celebrate and honor the whale with red alder, a tree found in coastal areas from Alaska to California. Despite the fact that this rattle was created very recently, the artist uses black and red pigments two of the oldest and most consistently used colors in Northwest Coast Native art. Question 19. What kinds of patterns and shapes do you notice in the rattle designs? Question number 20. Why do you think the artist chose to use black and red paints? Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the questions. Koopa Yurok artist George Blake is known for working in both traditional and contemporary styles. Elk are an important animal to Northern California communities, providing meat, hide, sinew, and bones. Traditionally, elk horns were used for tools such as spoons and handles on blades. This dude boot incorporates both the traditional and the contemporary. It is traditional through the utilization of the elk horn, and it is contemporary because the artist has carved it to look like a cowboy style boot, complete with a silver spur. When paying tribute to Mr. Blake with an honorary doctorate of humane letters, Humboldt State University President Lisa Rosbacher said, through his traditional and contemporary work, George reminds us of the power of art to build connections across time and place. Question number 21. Why do you think Mr. Blake chose to carve the elk horn into a cowboy boot? Question number 22. Can you think of another example in this lesson of an artwork made from one kind of material that looks like it was made from something else. Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer these questions. Conclusion. As you reflect on the objects and stories shared in this lesson, here are some questions to answer. Question number 23, what are some of the animals that call the American West home? Question number 24, how are those animals important to the communities of people who live across the American West? Question number 25, how do artists celebrate those animals in artwork? And our final activity, activity number 12, Create an artwork that celebrates your favorite animal. It could be a painting, a sculpture, 
poem, a song, or a dance. Please feel free to pause this video in order to answer the questions and complete the activity. Thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. To learn more about the learning opportunities at the Autry Museum of the American West, please visit our website, as you can see on the screen. Thanks and take care.